All right, looking at radical functions, and to start with, we're going to look at what's called a basic square root function, or basic radical function, which is just y equals the square root of x. And when we're looking at this, we're going to look first at just what the graph is, and we're going to graph it using a table of values to start with, and then we're going to look for what patterns are involved, and then we can do it more quickly after that. And then we're also going to look at what the domain and the range are and try and explain why they are what they are. Maybe before we start looking at the graph uh, of this basic radical function, let's just look at this symbol here that you've seen before but maybe never thought about. That symbol there, that radical symbol, that square root symbol, uh, was introduced by a guy named Christoph Rudolph uh, almost 500 years ago in the early 1500s. Uh, it's thought that uh, it is because it's meant to look like a lowercase r, sort of an elaborate r. Uh, I don't know if there's any direct proof of that, but that's the that's the common thinking. Anyways, let's go down here where we have some axes and a table. We'll even add a grid to it there to make it a little bit easier. We're going to try and graph this basic radical function here. Uh, we're going to start by thinking about y equals square root of x. Now, normally when we start to graph a function, it's important to think about, you know, what kind of values make sense to pick for x there. All right. For a lot of the functions you've looked at in your mathematical career so far, you can pick anything you want for that for that variable x. But in this case, there's going to be certain things that we aren't going to be able to pick. Maybe you've uh, used the square root button on your calculator before, and you've I'm not sure if you you tried things and see what uh, happens here, but you know if you try numbers like square root of nine, you know you're going to get a three, and so on, right? Square root of 144, you're going to get 12, right? For square root. Now I don't know if you ever thought about what, say, the lowest number you could put there is. Is it one? Is it numbers less than one? Can you put down there square root of 0.5? You can, right? Some numbers you don't get uh, nice whole number answers. If you put something down that's not a perfect square, can you put zero? Square root of zero? Of course you can. You get zero. The numbers you can't put here are negative numbers, right? If I put square root of negative one, this is going to tell me that it's not a real number, all right? Non real answer. It's not a real number. The lowest thing I can put underneath there x has to be at least 0, 0 or greater. All right, so that the domain for this thing is x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So when I choose numbers here, the numbers that I have to put in here for x that I can choose are 0 or greater. Now, I'm going to start with 0 since that's the lower limit. And I since I'm going to by hand, I'm going to choose numbers that are going to be convenient to work with. So I'm going to choose perfect squares here. I'm going to choose 1, I'm going to choose 4, I'm going to choose 9, and the reason that is because when I figure out what y is, y is the square root of that number, so 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, and so on, if 16 is 4, 25 is 5. This is not going to fit on my grid, but I'll put it down here anyways. 36 is 6, and you could go on there. Now, that doesn't mean there's not points in between we could use, and we can look at some of those in a second here. If I plot those points on there, 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 4, 2, right? Plot these points, and there's 9, 3, 16. This is, let's put some, let's put a scale on here maybe. So we can see what we're doing. There's 5, there's 10, there's 15, right? And here's 5 up here. Uh, so we need, we could probably fit one more point in there, that one. 16, 4. The rest aren't going to fit on my graph. Now, if I, these are, these are not a straight line. This is a curve. It's actually a curve whose shape you've seen before. But we'll look at that a little later. Now, if we look at the shape of this, the graph reflects this property here because the graph only exists at that axis and to the right of it, right? There's nothing over here, which is why I had the axis set up that way. There's nothing on the left side because 
you only have positive values and zero there. Now if we look at the range, we haven't looked at what the range is here. From the graph you can tell that the range is zero or bigger. The range is in fact y is greater than zero. And the reason is, again, if this says square root of some number there, there's no way to get a negative number. If I go to my calculator again, and I try as I might if I do square root of whatever number I put in here, square root of 20, square root of 0 0.001, no matter what I do, I'm never going to get a negative number. The lowest I can get there for an answer is 0, right? I'm putting in square root of 0, and I get 0, but there's no way I can get a negative answer. You can't get you can't put a negative number under that square root sign and you're not going to be able to get a negative answer negative result here so both the domain and the range are x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero now we just graphed values that were whole numbers here but of course you could graph if you really wanted to because these don't fit on the graph anyway so let's say we don't have those let's say we're going to graph a few more in in between here so let's uh let's move these down a little bit and let's say we were going to put a number in here like 2, okay, and 3. Now these numbers are not going to be nice whole numbers because 2 and 3 aren't perfect squares, but there's still values that are going to fit on that curve. All right, so if we, if we did the square root of 2, right, you get 1.4 roughly. Okay, and you can see that 1.41, let's put that, it's obviously approximate, but... And if we did square root of 3... You're going to get roughly 1.73. Okay, so those points, if you if you put what 2 is here, it's about 1.4. And what 3 is here, well, it looks approximately 1.7 or so. So you can have all those other points on there as well. Obviously, the, the curve's a continuous curve there, and any point along there is fine. All right? Now, as much as this uh, graph that I've drawn is beautiful, uh, maybe we should use the technology here and we'll put in the square root function into uh, into this online calculator here. Now if the shortcut when you're typing it in here is you can just type as you saw I just did SQRT and then it'll flip to that uh, square root sign or if you're using this there's a button down there either way. So if we put in square root of X there and turn the graph on you can see what it looks like. Maybe let's make it a little darker there. Okay, now I'll shift it over here because we don't need the negative side either direction. This again is um, only in quadrant one. It's only the positive part here. Now you might recognize that shape because you have probably in the past graphed something that is related to this. You've graphed y equals x squared. All right. That graph, y equals x squared, that parabola, that has exactly the same shape. Now let's make that green. Let's turn this one back on. It has the same shape, only this has two parts to it. And this only has one part to it. The reason is because when you square a number, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, there's a result over here. You can square a positive, square a negative, you're going to get the same result either way. But if you square take the square root of a number. Number one, the, the numbers you put underneath that square root sign have to be only positive. And the numbers that you get as a result are only positive. So there's only that half there. This would be the, this purple curve is the inverse of this green curve as long as we restrict that, restrict this first curve here. There you go. Okay, so there's the, there's x squared, but only where x is greater than zero, just that half of that thing, all right? That's a good connection to understand. Now, if you, if you zoom out on this thing, okay, um, zoom out so we can see some of these points here. Maybe we can fit, let's go there. Uh, I don't know how far we can go with this here, but if we look at a point here, right? Starts at 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. Uh, next whole numbers are going to be 9, 3. Next nice whole number, 16, 4. This is the one we couldn't see on our hand-drawn graph, 25, 5, and so on, right? Let's maybe scroll out a bit more and you can see. Right? But if you if you followed some points up here, 100, 10, right? You could find in here probably 81, 9. You could find 
64, 8, and so on. All right, that's it. Basic square root graph, table of values, pattern that you already know and can use, right? Perfect squares, easiest way to graph it.